gospel according to According to John. <laughs> I once was lost and now I'm found. <laughs> Glory to you, O oh Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Holy Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak with what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Please remain standing as we invoke the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Spirit, amen. Please be seated. I deal with a lot of people who come believing that they are possessed by the devil or being attacked by the devil. Just a couple of weeks ago, this man came to see me and he says, Father, I believe that I am possessed by the devil. I need your help. And I said, well, what's going on? And he says, well, I, all day long, Father, I'm hearing the, 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 these voices, this voice giving me orders all day long, Father. I hear these, these, these evil voices, this evil voice giving me orders. Am I possessed, Father? Am I possessed? And I looked at him and I said, no, you're married. But what would you do without your spouse? What would you do without your loved ones? So many of you 
have been touched by the loss of a loved one. I'm looking out here right now and seeing, for example, Maria who lost her husband a number of years ago. Right there, Kathy and Kay. Uh, just recently, Sarah there in the back. I could go down the line here. And you've been touched in your life by loss, the loss of a loved one, and then you are submerged in grief. And what is grief? Well, grief is love left over. Love left within ourselves that we don't know what to do with. That's why it hurts so much. That's why so many people who grieve fall into depression after the death of a loved one. And God, the God that we celebrate today, the Christian God, is a God of relationships. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, three people inside that God. And God, we are told in the Bible, in the first letter of John, is love. And when you try to keep love, that is God, locked up inside of you, it hurts. That's why it's so painful. Grief is so painful. So the only way to become unhurt, to deal with grief, is to unlock that love. Release it. Huh? Free it. In other words, let me put this into normal language, okay? If you are divorced, you need to unlock that hurt and release it. It's your love inside that is locked up and in order to experience peace, you need to experience freedom and to do this, you have to open up, release that love, let it out. What does that mean? Well, find yourself a suitable partner. Get into a relationship. Hmm? Love wants to flow out into a beloved. If you have been widowed, you've lost someone, that love that is inside of you that hurts, release it by finding yourself another husband or, you know, or it's normal. Uh -huh. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Or another wife. Love wants to flow out. If God is a relationship, that means to love, you have to be in a relationship. To do God, to do love, you have to be in a relationship. That is why we call marriage a sacrament. That is a spouse is called to be a revelation of God's love to the other to be a sacrament, grace to the other. Sacraments give us grace, which is gift, the, you know, that gift of God to help us on this journey. To allow your mate to glimpse the love of God. God is glimpsed and experienced in relationships, especially in marriage. That is why it hurts me so much to see how we in the church judge people who want to be married and who quickly after the death of their loved one want to find a partner. You know, after a couple of months, three, four months, especially men look in their grief to find a wife and the religious people start pointing fingers. Oh, 
He must have not loved his wife. No, he's lonely. Hello? He's normal. Stop pointing fingers and judging people. It's completely normal. And live your life. That's another one. Huh? Don't think about what people are going to think if you get into a relationship. You've got one life. Live it. You have one chance at it. Then you're thinking about what people are going to think, especially your family members. Uh, with family, you just come out well in photos. Take it from me. <laughs> uh, live your life. I was very touched yesterday by a lady. Who, her testimony or her life experience is on Facebook. Her name is Juana. She came to see me and she wanted me to record a video with her. And she was 15 years old when she was sold by her family in marriage. And she was abused during that relationship with this guy, her husband, who beat her raped her many times, abused her physically, emotionally. And she got to a point where she said, enough is enough. And she got a divorce. But she was going to church, a Catholic church. And the priest and all the other people threw her out of the church. Because she divorced him. You can no longer go to communion. You can no longer come even. Huh? That's what she was told. That's what she says. Because huh? marriage is forever. Doesn't matter the circumstances. It's all black and white for so many religious people, isn't it? And you know from your life that it's not all black and white. There's a lot of gray areas. That's why we have annulments. Yeah, Jesus said marriage is forever and divorce is wrong. Unless the marriage is unlawful. You know, they forget that part. There's people who, like Juana, are 15 and sold into marriage. And now, because of religious rules, she's going to have to be stuck there forever and submit herself to be abused? No. You have no obligation to allow people to abuse you. As she didn't either. And I'm very proud of her. And you know what? On that video she says, she's 52, and she says, I'm looking for a man. <laughs> she hasn't given up that she will find the guy, the right one, huh? That's out there for her. And you don't give up either. Huh? God doesn't want you to be miserable and unhappy. What kind of a God would that be? God wants you to be with somebody. God didn't want to be alone, so what would, you know, that's why he's got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if God doesn't want to be alone, what makes you think that, you know, it's good for you? If it ain't good for God, why would it be good for you? In fact, if in the first book of the Bible, if I'm reading the same Bible that I hope everybody's reading here, it says it's not good for men to be alone. And before God made Eve for Adam, he, was, he made all these other animals. Hmm? And he presented them, and none of them, none of them fulfilled Adam until he saw Eve. And he said, this one is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. Hmm? That's why God wants you to be in relationship, grace to, to each other. So to deal with that grief, get into a relationship. Hmm? That is why it hurts so much to see how we judge people who want to be happy, especially in the church. 
Biblically speaking, if you read the Bible, after the death of a brother, the wife was supposed to be taken by the other brother as his wife to not be alone. Now, we ain't going to do that now, you know. <laughs> okay, no. Uh -huh. But it's all to be in a relationship. You see, we make getting married so complicated in the church. Hmm? I'm so proud, and I asked uh, Norma uh, for permission uh, to share their, their story, and she says, I'd be honored. Okay, Norma and Frank just celebrated their sixth wedding anniversary. Stand up, the both of you. No. Look at the, that young couple. <laughs> I won't tell them how old you all you both are. Okay. But they they've been married for six years, and was it it was not easy to have you be married. It, it was not easy. I said I only wanted that cute little kid, Father Adam, to marry. That was it. He needed a chore in itself to get. It was a, a very arduous process for them to be able to be married in the church. Really? Mm -hmm. But they, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah. They make it very complicated in the church world. Well, out there in the church world, not here at Divine Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of the two of you, you know, that they are together, they accompany each other, they go out together. Uh, they're going out to dinner today at four o'clock. I was told, yeah, it's wonderful, huh? You know, they go to the gym together. They do everything together, huh? They're accompanying each other on this journey and we should be happy for them and not make it complicated. When I was still in the, the diocese in California before I came here now to Las Vegas, I went to a workshop, a two-day workshop, about making everybody who wants to come and be married in the church go through a one-year preparation process. One year. One-year preparation process. And so all these people who, you know, uh, are in offices, you know, in, in church offices, they don't work with you, the people of God, okay? Uh, listen to you, and like I do each and every day, uh, make all these rules, uh, put burdens on people. Uh. One year from, in order to be married, Unreal. And in the meantime, live in sin, right? <laughs> or to get an annulment. To get an annulment in the church, in most, in, uh, uh, most places, not only does it take years, but lots of mullah. Huh? Yep. Yeah. Well, in the Polish National Catholic Church, if you want an annulment, it's also a process because we have a diocesan tribunal in order to review your previous marriage, but it's free. So if you want an annulment and be married in the church and have a church wedding, talk to me. I'll be, I'll be happy to help you. So you can have a church wedding and have your marriage blessed by God. Hmm? No matter the circumstances that happened before. Because God doesn't want you by yourself. As God didn't want to be by himself. Hmm? See, we, we, do all sorts of, we do all sorts of things. You know, make, um, make rules. And rules are there for people, not people there for rules. Can you imagine, you know putting uh, Norma and Frank through a natural family planning class. <laughs> Where you learn how to measure your temperature. <laughs> I mean, you know, let's just 
be normal, okay? And I promise all of you the same thing. Um, let's not place burdens on people's shoulders, as so often we can do as church people, but let's accompany each other and celebrate with each other uh, you know, the community that we are, the family that we are. And I'm especially grateful on a day like today when we celebrate relationships that I have each and every one of you because I do not consider myself a single man. I'm a married guy. I'm married to all of you. Hmm? The church. For better and worse. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why I live my life out in a healthy way not getting myself into things that others who are in the same life as me and you all watch the news do mm -hmm. because I spend time with all of you mm -hmm. like can I tell them all Okay, like tonight, at the end of the day, I'm going to visit with Andy and Julie, okay? And on a different night, I'll visit, you know, someone else, okay? I could go down the line, and, okay? Because you're my family. Hmm? And that's absolutely wonderful. Hmm? We all need company in our life. I know that very well. Uh, I was uh, 25 when I was ordained a priest. And right after I was ordained a priest, I lived with a, a priest in a, in a rectory. And let's just say, you know, his different habits irked me the wrong way. Particularly, you know, all sorts of habits like eating lots of beans at night <laughs> and, uh, and the walls were very thin I could hear everything you know, bean bean you know, magical food the more you eat the more you toot <laughs> so I could hear his uh, sounds at night but then after I went and I lived by myself after just a year and, and a few months of being a priest I was sent to live by myself in a very remote town. Oh, how I wish, you know, to hear those sounds. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So I'm very grateful for each and every one of you in my life. And I pray that you also experience the gratitude of those in your life. Hmm? those that the Lord has sent you. And if you need to work on that grief in your life, do it. Hmm? You've got one life. God doesn't want you depressed or alone hmm? or hurting. That's, that stuff is not from God. Yeah. Hmm? Aren't you too, some, some, we're going to talk about that tonight, but aren't you too just absolutely so happy that you found each other? Yes. Yeah. How long has it been now that six you've been years. married? Six years, too. July. Another July. couple in six years. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations to everybody. And uh, if uh, any, of, any of you, uh, especially uh, ladies, uh, are looking for a guy, there's one particular uh, gentleman who comes to church here who is looking, okay? <laughs> He's got a house. <laughs> Let, let's stand and profess our faith together. <laughs> I believe in one God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all our sins. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ.
Christ, the only Son of God, to truly of God the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being of the Father. Through him all things are made. Please share this comment.